Hi, I'm Elizabeth Brown, the Kitchen Vixen, and on today's show, we're going to talk about the incredible edible egg and what makes eggs so incredible, particularly eggs from pasture-raised chickens. We'll learn why eggs are the gold standard of all protein-rich foods, even how to incorporate eggs into our beauty routine. We're going to do a quick workout while we make some quick egg recipes and even what to do with those egg cartons once all of our eggs are gone. There's so much to experience and learn when you watch me, The Kitchen Vixen. Now before we delve into the which came first, the chicken or the egg science, we're gonna make some hard boiled eggs while we also grab a workout. So to make hard boiled eggs, you wanna make sure that you put your eggs in a pot, fill the pot with water about an inch above the top of the eggs, place the lid on the pot, place the burner on high, and let the eggs come to a boil. And then once the eggs come to a boil, you simply turn off the burner and set our timer for 12 minutes. It's that simple. So you can go and get your workout in and come back and you'll have perfect hard boiled eggs every time. How you doing Elizabeth? Nice Hi. to see you. <laughs> so today we're gonna to talk about uh, what exercises are as basic as the egg. The egg is like the gold standard of all protein. It has all the essential amino acids in the right proportion. First of all, eggs are the gold standard of all protein sources because eggs contain in the perfect proportion all of your essential amino acids. And in case you wanted to remember those amino acids, here's a mnemonic device. Private Tim Hall. Phenylalanine, valine, threonine, tryptophan, the sleepy amino acid, isoleucine, methionine, histidine, arginine, leucine, and lysine, which you think of as the cold sore amino acid. So eggs are the perfect proportion of all of those amino acids, and amino acids are used to make every cell of your body. They make digestive enzymes, so they help you break down food, and those same amino acids are used to rebuild and restore muscle after exercise, so very important. Okay, we have hard boiled eggs on the stove, ready to go. So when we get home, we have a good snack. But in the meantime, in that 12 minutes, I want people to use their time efficiently. So show us a workout we can do in those 12 minutes. Excellent. So we're gonna just pick three exercises, fundamental movements in the body. Um, just as the egg is a very basic food source, we should look at the body and the basic movements that it can do. So um, we're gonna, instead of doing a body part or a chest or a bicep, something like that, we're gonna do a push, we're gonna do a pull, and we're gonna do a squat movement. Very, Excellent. very fundamental movements. So if we can learn how to squat better, and we can do that at home anytime, um, that's gonna be very, very good for our exercise and health going forward. When they say I can't do a squat, it's no. like, well, if you're if you're lifting properly, you already are. Yeah. One of the things I find is that people do lean forward. One of the nice things, often it's because their glutes aren't quite strong enough, especially at the bottom of the lift. So when they've got a bench, um, we can get them to just sit down and stand up. Just sit down. And if you come from the side, you can see that my shoulders stay over my feet and it's a nice straight movement. So if you just want to try that, Elizabeth. Try not to lean forward, keep your chest up a little okay. bit more. Yep, and sit, just sit down. Just put your hands in front just to give you a little bit of tension through the Excellent. So now what we're looking, your shoulders going over your feet, and I can add a weight into your hand. Hold that. Hold it up. Yep. There we okay. go. Now squat? Yes, please. Excellent. So anything you can find in the house, um, you can use as resistance. Uh, it could be your cat, could be your dog. But now we got the legs under under control, so what, what about the upper body? What are we going to do? Okay, so we're going to split the upper body into a push movement and a pull movement. Again, um, one of the most simple movements you can do on your own uh, in the house is the push up. Now, we want to balance that with some pull work so we get some back as well as your front. But even doing a push up, we can get your back muscles working and the muscles around your shoulder blades to help stabilize, which is very healthy. So if you want to get down into a push-up position, we'll just show you some variations. Okay, so Elizabeth is um, a highly trained athlete and she's immediately going into a full push-up position. So as we go slowly down, there you go. I'm looking that her elbows stay below the shoulders and push back up. She's keeping a long alignment through the body, nice and straight from shoulder to heel. Her abs are on, where you go again. So she's keeping nice and strong through the middle of the trunk there. And the other thing I'm looking for is that her scapulas are moving. So as she goes down, where you go, last one, her shoulder blades come together 
and as she pushes away, they just move apart. That's good. All right, Simon, so now I got my legs worked. I got some of my upper body. I'm feeling a little imbalanced, so how are we gonna correct <laughs> that? <laughs> well, thank you for pointing that out. Okay, so, um, Whereas the hip joint is a very stable joint, gravity keeps it all in place, the shoulder gives us a lot of mobility, so there's a lot of muscles around the front and the back. So just doing only push-ups is going to just create a little bit of an imbalance, as Elizabeth said. What we want to do is balance that out with some pulling work. Okay, so anything heavy you can find in your house, a gallon of water, something like that. Again, what we talked about in the push-up, our core is nice and strong, and then we're going to just row straight up and down. Okay, there we yeah, go. There we go. Like okay, so what we're looking for is the back stays nice and straight. It's not rounded like that. I always it's turn nice my hand. That, that's just yep, my habit. Yep, that's a natural rotation. So mm -hmm. that little rotation that you're doing through there helps keep the shoulder down as well. That's great. All right, Simon. So this was great. We, we our goal was to do a 12-minute workout while we were hard boiling eggs, which are the gold standard of all protein sources. So you gave us gold standard exercises, and how does that relate to the egg? Um, so we know you've got 12 minutes, probably what you're going to end up doing is like a circuit style. So we'll go from one exercise to the next to the next. So from a squat to a push up to a pulling exercise. And while one, um, your legs are working, your upper body's getting some rest and vice versa. So as we keep working around that circuit in the circle, there's your egg. 12 minutes, nice little circuit, and you'll get a good workout with that as well. What a perfect post-workout. Oh, wait a minute. You know, when I went to school for nutrition, one of the first things I learned was that you are not supposed to drink raw eggs. I was about to do that. Everyone thinks easy protein source, right? No, because raw eggs contain a protein called avidin, which binds with biotin. And biotin it has become very popular. It's the B vitamin that we associate with hair health. So we definitely don't want to drink raw eggs. It will bind biotin, make it, make it unavailable and it might hurt our hair. So instead, a better option would be some of those hard boiled eggs I made before we went and worked out. And I put some nutritional yeast on here for extra B vitamins. So better post-workout, hard boiled egg, nutritional yeast, a little sesame seed and black pepper. Hmm, perfect. Now because eggs are so versatile and so economical and you can add vegetables to them, we're actually gonna make two dishes to make your time worthwhile and really use some of these wonderful pasture-raised eggs. And comparatively speaking, one egg has about seven grams of protein, and that same amount of protein from a chicken that's been pasture-raised costs about 10 cents more. So eggs are definitely the more economical protein source. So let's make use of our eggs. And we're gonna make enough so we can either eat eggs throughout the week, or we can save some for later use by freezing our egg muffins. So we're gonna make a vegetable quiche, with a spinach crust. It's gonna be gluten-free, and we're gonna make vegetable egg muffin. Okay, we're gonna start with the veggie quiche because we wanna make the crust first. And to start, we need to set a skillet on about medium-high heat. And we're gonna add some olive oil, about a teaspoon or two, three quarters pound or about 12 cups of spinach. It's a lot, but it will really dwindle down. And while that's cooking, We'll add our flour base. So we have gluten-free breadcrumbs and a gluten-free flour mixture. Again, you can make this with regular flour, regular breadcrumbs. We're gonna add some sea salt to our flour mixture and we're gonna add some fresh nutmeg or if you have already ground nutmeg, about a quarter teaspoon. And then we're gonna mix that with our pork. We also need to take some of the oil and add it to our pie pan. We're gonna bake the quiche crust and then we're gonna chop the vegetables while the crust is baking. So we'll make good use of our time. And again, we're gonna double up. We're gonna make, we're gonna chop the vegetables for the quiche and for the egg muffins. So look how much the spinach has wilted. That's incredible. This thing was totally full and now it looks like it's nothing. So we want all that moisture and all the spinach added to our flour mixture. Mix this up. So you see how we form almost like a spinach type dough. It's actually really cool. We're just gonna press this into the pie tin. And this is really something you can use for anything. I mean, if you want to make a, a meat pie, 
you know, again, we, we don't want to have a lot of extra empty calorie carbs, adding vegetables, in any kind of vegetables even, it could be shredded carrots, shredded zucchini. All right, when your pie crust is all pressed into the pie tin, I would leave it on a baking tray and we're going to set it in the oven. The oven set for 375. Set your timer for 15 minutes. So now we're going to prep our vegetables and make sure your vegetables are nice and clean. These have all been washed. And for asparagus, the recipe called for six. You could use however many spears you want. It doesn't matter. You just want to make sure you break the asparagus where it naturally breaks. I learned about this on Friends. And we'll chop our asparagus. The original recipe said dime-sized pieces, but just pretty much just kind of mince it the way you want. Okay, so now we're going to add some mushrooms. We're doing shiitakes. And when I did my master's thesis, it was on the study of energy and water and weight management and not just energy like calorie energy, but vibrational energy. So shiitake mushrooms are actually one of the highest vibrational foods and they're also super nutritious. Mushrooms are one of the richest sources of vitamin D and they're the only plant source of vitamin D because vitamin D is usually found in animal products like our eggs. And these same eggs from pasture-raised hens contain up to 64% more vitamin D than your conventional eggs. So there's so many reasons to eat eggs from pasture-raised hens and always eat the whole egg because most of the nutrition is actually in the yolk and the protein. 60% of the protein is in the yolk. So eat the whole egg and you'll get all of these benefits. Next, we're gonna add some broccoli and broccoli is a cruciferous vegetable. You either love it or hate it. If you don't like it, there are other cruciferous vegetables you can use, you can enjoy. I chose the red onion. I like to add more color to my recipes, so the more color you can get, the better. Okay, now our crust is done, so let's take it out of the oven. You can see how pretty it smells amazing, actually. Nice and crispy. And now we're gonna add the ingredients for the filling. So we're only using three of our lovely pasture-raised eggs. Crack those into the... Uh, blender or you can use a hand mixer or you can even do it by hand if you like. Most of the nutrition is in actually in the yolk. We do get some from the white. We get most of the protein. We get 60% of the protein from the yolk, 40% from the white. That's why it's always good to use the whole egg. We get all of our fat soluble vitamins like that good vitamin D from the yolk. We get omega-3 fats which are very important for preventing inflammation which we think of with chronic disease and omega-3s are great if you're an active person like I am so it helps with post-workout recovery. Okay, so now to our eggs, we're gonna add about three quarters of a cup of cottage cheese. And if you can, just like with the eggs, we get eggs from pasture-raised chickens. So with cottage cheese, you can get, or any type of dairy product, like our milk as well, we get this from grass-fed cows. So not only are we looking at this from a nutrition standpoint, we get more nutrition because the animals eat a really good diet, they live a good natural life, they eat things they're supposed to eat, they also live a good life. So that's, again, good energy into our food. And I'm all about the energy. And we're gonna add a little sea salt, a little fresh ground black pepper. And we're gonna blend it up. And we're just gonna mix this with our vegetables and hope that it will fit into the pie tin. This is our quiche filling. Just gonna fit. Okay, so it's probably a good idea to keep your pie crust on a baking tray because it might overflow a little bit. So we're gonna stick it in the same oven, set at 375 for about 30 minutes. No matter what kind of eggs you buy, although I definitely advocate for eggs from pasture-raised chickens, you're going to be left with some egg cartons. So you can do like I do and use them as boot supports. Keep in mind, don't buy styrofoam. It never breaks down. But in this case, we're reusing our egg cartons to keep my boots upright. They look nice, and I get to repurpose those cartons. So it's a win-win for me and the environment. Making the egg muffins gives us another opportunity to use those economical, protein-rich, nutrient-rich eggs in a whole new way. Plus, we can add different vegetables to our mix. In our veggie quiche recipe, we used red onions, and this time we're gonna use scallions. So again, just more of those allium vegetables that add lots of extra antioxidant nutrients. All right, so we're gonna add some red pepper for some extra vitamin C, can't get enough of that. So we're gonna use about half a zucchini. The nice thing about zucchini is it's very easy to shred by hand. And we're using both an orange and a purple carrot. 
So we get our beta carotene, which we think of with carrots, and a good workout for your biceps. And your aggression. <laughs> so we're just gonna do a little bit of a chiffonade, like a ribbon cut for the fresh basil. Now this recipe originally called for oregano, but there wasn't oregano at the supermarket, so I decided to go for some thyme. And we have a little sea salt and freshly ground black pepper. Okay, so we're just gonna put a little oil in one tin, and then I'm just gonna use my my brush to brush it around the other tin. Okay, so now we're just gonna pan whisk the eggs. So we're just gonna add a little bit of veggie to each muffin tin, and we're gonna top it with the egg mixture. So you've got at least 12 little mini meals or snacks all ready to go with all your antioxidant rich veggies. So we're gonna use a quarter cup measuring cup so that we make sure we get an even amount of egg mixture in each muffin. So even though I don't use any like ham or bacon or cheese in this, you certainly could you know, top this off with a little bit of extra flavor if you like. Okay, so when our egg muffins are all done, notice how everything's filled to the top. And we're gonna place them in the same oven where we have the quiche. The oven's set at 375 for 30 minutes. So your eggs are, are they pasture raised? Yes, they are pasture raised. And what's the difference? So we have happy ones, happier and happiest. And what makes them the happiest? These are uh, grass and sprout fed, and they are free range. They go everywhere. Perfect. Gym, party, aerobics, the they gym. go yoga. Oh, I love they it. go meditation class. My own heart. They okay. go Zumba chicken. <laughs> okay, so I want to get a dozen of your best eggs. Okay, happiest sure. eggs. Okay, so I brought my own cart. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Okay, we're at the farmer's market and we're here to restock our good pasture raised eggs. And as I've learned from our egg farmer, there are different levels of pasture raised. They all get to be outside, but some of them have the best diets. They get to eat the grasses, the sprouts, and they even go to the gym apparently. And when you come to the farmer's market, the one one of my favorite things is that you can bring your own egg carton. You can't do that in the grocery store. Otherwise, if you have an extra carton laying around, you can use them for boot supports like I do, or you can use them to make an herb garden or to store your jewelry. But bring your own carton if you can, buy the pasture-raised eggs. They have the highest omega-3 content, so pasture-raised eggs are the way to go. If you've already bought conventional eggs, but you want to switch to pasture-raised for your diet, don't let these babies go to waste. When I was a kid, I used to put egg yolk in my hair just because it felt like the thing to do. But now research has shown that there is a peptide, a combination of amino acids in the egg yolk that works very similarly to a popular hair growth drug. In fact, the researchers are so confident about their findings, they call it the hair growth peptide. And once you use the yolks, of course we have to do something with the whites. So we wanna combine the whites with some lemon juice and honey. You simply whisk it together and apply it to your face and let set for about 15 minutes and you get a nice firming antibacterial astringent face mask. And with the hair mask, we do the same thing. We combine a bunch of egg yolks, we whip them up and we apply them through our hair and let that set for up to 30 minutes. I used to sleep in my hair mask, so whatever works for you. And then when you're done, you'll have nice, shiny, hopefully more hair in the long run, thanks to those conventional eggs that you can still eat or use in your beauty routine. So this is done. Looks lovely. The serving is one quarter of the quiche, 335 calories, 18 grams of muscle building protein, five grams of fiber, and 300 milligrams of those wonderful coveted omega-3 fats, thanks to those pasture-raised eggs and all the vegetables. Plus, you get 10 to 68% of all of your vitamins and minerals. So this is a super nutrient-rich egg dish. Mm. Oh my God, it's delicious. Mm. The crust is perfect. Okay, we're gonna check on the egg muffins. Oh, they look wonderful. They smell amazing. So we have our perfect little egg muffin. Smaller portion, but almost as nutrient dense as the quiche. It's hot. <laughs> mm, it's really good. Mm, it's delicious. Isn't that great when you can get protein and vegetables and it tastes good? Thank you for joining me, Elizabeth Brown, the Kitchen Vixen, on a food science-y, fun cooking, life hacking journey. The Kitchen Vixen is out to save the world, one energy-enhancing, disease-fighting recipe at a time. She's a superhero of sorts, and not the other kind of vixen. Mm -hmm.